All right. Uh, welcome, Larry Lexicon, a.k.a. Ryan Price. Actually, flip those, Ryan Price. We're going to start out with the story of how you and I met, because it's pretty crazy that you and I are sitting here right now. Um, anyways, good to see you, man. Welcome. Good to see you, too. So, glad, to, glad you're here, Larry. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> All right. Uh, so... 2000 i'm in a lot uh, sorry in hawaii and long story short meet a person um in a conversation i was just literally living on the beach and for about six months and roaming around uh you know searching for the answers taking a break from college getting a conversation one day with a guy who was talking about how he sailed from the islands over to uh, san francisco and so in that conversation, I just decided this is meaningful. I'm going to leave this island via boat when I'm ready. So a couple more months pass. I kind of finish out my trip and okay, best place to find a boat. I was on the big island, flew to Oahu where they have the biggest harbor, right? Um, or to find a boat, biggest harbor in the islands, Oahu. Go to the harbor. First day I spent inside, uh, slept inside got a hostel in six months. So I was outside on the beach for six months and got a hostel, dropped my bag, walked down to the Harbor. And first person I ran into is the Harbor master. And I was like, Hey, where would I find a boat that's going to the mainland? He goes, have you ever sailed before? I was like, no, he's like, it's the worst time of the year to sail East and you don't have any experience. There's no one going anywhere. Essentially fuck off. Uh, <laughs> okay kept talk kept walking next person's like yeah the transient section's right over there walked down to the transient section found a boat about to leave um you know it had a little sign outside saying you know, getting crew or something like that someone told me they were about to leave and were looking for crew and i just like yelled and this mug mug popped up out of the galley i remember that and, <laughs> and then uh we ended up i got crew on the boat and we spent three weeks at sea and uh, we tried to hop freight trains back from uh, Seattle, ended up taking a bus. Um, and then a few months after that, he called me up and said, hey, I'm thinking about going back to college. And I said, well, you want to come up to Chico? And he goes, sure. And he wanted to do the same thing I was learning I wanted to do, which was right. And we both became journalism majors. We moved in together and he moved in with our track house. It's like 14 of us living there. I have a great story about his cat that uh, happened during that time, which we'll get to. But uh, long story short, about a year later, we both were um, finishing up our second semester for the Orion, which was our school newspaper, which was a really good college newspaper in the nation. And he won best uh, writer and I won best reporter and our other friend won best editor, which are the three main and most prized uh, awards. And for us to do that <laughs> from where we met uh, was just one of the most uh, just nicest stories I've been a part of. Is that have, how you? <laughs> I have so many quite like amazing, like I'm like, how, the, you, what? You guys are just transient, I know. transient <laughs> sailors? <laughs> Pretty much. Ryan, what the hell does that mean? Transient, like, tra is, that, is that the word you said? Oh, yeah, the transient train section. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had a little boat in Hawaii. That's what I was doing there. I was That's living right. there with my buddy Dave on the Naked Mermaid. It was just this little tiny boat. And at the harbor, they have what's called a transient dock, which is really for people that are just passing through to resupply, things like that. And so um, that's where my boat was at, was at the trans transient dock. And that's, that's where Dan found me. But and that was your boat. You're like, you're like, I'll allow this asshole to get on my boat. And, and we didn't sail my boat. On it. My okay, boat. okay. No, um, while I was in Hawaii, I had met um, this girl, Lanier, and actually heard her voice is what attracted me to her. I heard her voice when I was in my boat one day. I was like, oh, what's that accent? She was from New Zealand, right? And uh, I went out and hit this girl up, Lanier, and she told me that she was sailing on this boat from New Zealand to Canada, and um, they were looking for crew members. And I said, yeah, I'll, I'll crew with you guys and sail on this boat. It was an old boat, dude. This thing was built in the 1930s, all wood. Yikes. Yeah, no modern amenities or anything. So Whoa. it was pretty sketchy. Yeah. 55 That's the boat, same boat catch. you were on, Daniel? Yeah, it was a 55-foot catch, and it was doing a circumnavigation, as I remember. Uh, it was at least away for a long time from New Zealand, and it was kind of 
yeah there you go Dude. that's him i have a picture of me in the rigging too what's a catch what does that mean i think that's a boat that has two masts yeah two yeah masts. ryan's confirming okay yeah. okay yeah and uh so <laughs> if a guy like me so i rented a motorhome for five weeks and like in in europe and every little sound and creak and things like that would like would like keep me up at night thinking like something's about to fall apart or I didn't do something right. How do you deal with that anxiety on a boat? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. It, it, you know, I don't remember um, feeling that anxiety huh. back then, but I know if I redid it now at this age, I would. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense. I yeah. Feel totally Ignorance different. is bliss. Is, yeah, but but back then, I just you know it was just an adventure. Wow. Yeah, That's I think amazing. of that a lot too. How different that would be if I did it again. Like I remember, yeah. Like I remember reading Hundred Years of Solitude and uh, on the on the bow and like writing letters off the bow and throwing them to the ocean and like all this romantic stuff. But then I think about how miserable I would be. You know, just it's so hard. You know, you're wet all the time. It's never the ground's never flat. You know, it's it's tough, man. Thanks, man. Wow, yeah. that's super interesting. But that's your boat sank. You missed that part of the story. What? The naked mermaid sank. <laughs> no, it almost sank. It didn't sink. Okay. <laughs> it almost sank, dude. Come on, give me some credit. <laughs> Where's your boat now? Did you sell oh, it? Did you get rid of it? We sold it uh, when we left to go to Canada. Yeah. Amazing. It, it had suffered some uh, serious damage on a little jaunt around the island, and it was time to unload it. That's crazy. It's old, old and beat up. So you went from Ryan the sailor to uh, Larry the lexicon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's fill that gap. Yeah, 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 yeah. just like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a so that's a pretty strong gang member name or porn name. I don't know what you want to call it, like your pseudonym. <laughs> like, uh, tell me a little bit about why Larry Lexicon. So, um, I mean, this is teacher nerdy stuff, but okay, I had uh, an AP class, and I was prepping them for the AP exam, and we did some practice tests. And their scores were terrible, dude. I mean, they were awful. And so we went over some of the questions and um, I realized, oh, you guys don't even know what these words mean in, in these questions. How are you gonna score well if you don't know what these words are? Yeah. So um, I wanted to get them motivated to improve their vocabulary. So I kind of brainstormed some different ways to do that. And at the time I was playing on a softball team, those guys softball. And I had a, an Instagram account that I did for those guys softball where I played this, this is my other alter ego, dude, Cal Dinger. And I would just, it's just a beer league softball team. We were terrible. We, we went defeated every season. And uh, <laughs> after, after every game, I would interview the players like I was a serious sports reporter uh -huh. uh, doing player interviews and I'd interview them as Cal Dinger. And I thought, well, what if I what if I took this approach and put it in my classroom and interviewed students on like just stupid vocabulary things Yeah, um, and, and put them on Instagram so they could see each other and just have some fun with it. And so I needed to come up with a name. And so I was thinking, well, it's vocabulary. So I'll just be Larry vocabulary. And then a student suggested that my last name should be lexicon. Strong. So that That's came 12th grade word right there. Right. <laughs> so Larry lexicon was born just like that and start making videos. That's amazing. That's super yeah. amazing. I got to give credit to that kid because I don't think I heard the word lexicon until I was in college. It was incredible, dude. Her name's Layla. And I posed the question to the class. I said, I need a last name. I came up with Larry so far. I need a last name. And like that, she said, lexicon. That's oh, amazing. This That's a wrap. <laughs> dude, and it's stuck. That's amazing. So you teach AP and and and. I don't know what else to call it. Regular English yeah, language think, arts in high school. Yeah. English 11 juniors, which is just standard English. And then uh, I teach AP literature and AP um, composition. Yeah. Actually, I got a question for you, man. And you too, Ron. Okay. Well, no, it's more for Ron. <laughs> I want to put you on the spot a little bit, man. I'm sorry. I don't know okay. how well I would handle this question. Come on, but let's like, do it. Give if, it to you, me. <laughs> if you had the opportunity to create an alter ego, Oh, what would some options be? Um, um, 
like name wise or like what I would do? Yeah, like personality. Like what part of you would you like to get out that you don't get out and it would be able to, you know what I mean? Like that's the yeah, 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 yeah. I'll game. tell you, I'll tell you what. I've got a couple of them. Uh, one was I was like three espressos deep in, in uh, on Camino del Rey in uh, the Bay Area. <laughs> Like, like at 5 p.m., I don't even know why I was like drinking. Good start, espressos. by the way. It's a good start. Yeah. And uh, I'm driving around the Stanford campus. Redwood City, California was down near that area. So I know those are far apart, but I was around that kind of doing these loops. And I was listening to like the Bay Area, like, like hip hop station. You know, like the act, like, like yeah. real rap. And I'm rapping along with it. And I call my wife and I'm like, hey. I'm pretty sure I can rap. Like, I'm pretty sure that I should actually try to take up rapping and like want to do some rap battles and stuff. Okay. All right. She, she's gotcha. never one time heard me listen to rap music <laughs> before that minute. So she's like, you can go fuck yourself. Like, get out of here. <laughs> Are you high? <laughs> You're like, yes, I am. Kind of. Part of the alter ego. <laughs> kind of. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So you'd be a hip hop artist. Like, yeah, or mariachi singer or something like that. Or it's like uh, you you watch Parks and Rec, right? Ron, I've seen it. Yeah. Ron Swanson is like super conservative, like a um, just your your basic conserv. I don't even know how to describe him. Describe yeah. him, but like you know, doesn't use tech, doesn't have a cell phone, reads books, makes guns, or makes makes wood, does woodwork, blah blah blah. Yeah. But his alter ego is jazz a saxophonist, and he. <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows that about him um and i was like i kind of think because it's kind of a serious question like yeah you know ah man the ability to have an alter ego where you can just get some part of yourself out you know and fully experience it without judgment or conflict with the other aspect i would love that do you feel like uh ryan do you think that's part of the joy of larry lexicon is that you like are exercising a separate part of you no <laughs> i knew you were gonna say that man <laughs> dude you just fucking pop my balloon <laughs> no, I, I, I don't I knew I, it. it it's fun but i don't feel like it's a separate part of me it's just um i, I don't even know how to explain it um i guess it is like a, a, a different side of me it's like an angry yes, yes side it of me is that I can express without um without getting in trouble or at least exactly. so I thought until i ended up in tmz um you were on tmz so let me like oh, we'll yeah. explain real quick so larry lexicon is your pseudonym that you use on on social media yeah tiktok in particular and you play this character who's like angry and yells and is like kind of this like um imperialist like iron-fisted teacher right episodes you threatened to kill a puppy if they didn't like up their scores in this like national competition which was yeah. beautiful <laughs> that's great so someone took it seriously as someone always does this oh yeah awesome. yeah um god I, I forget the details on that but it ended up it ended up in tmz the video of me threatening to kill the puppy which was my dog which sounds terrible saying it like <laughs> saying it out of context sounds terrible but if you see the video I think it's hilarious. I stand by the joke. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's it's a worthy joke. It's a worthy joke. Yeah. Uh, so it ended up on TMZ, and I was like, I was getting death threats, uh, <laughs> email death threats, and people were finding me on Facebook, and I, I mean, people were vicious. So you know, it's not the first time, Ron, that this gentleman here has gotten busted for some hijinks he tried to pull. I learned how to do, yeah. Yeah, it's coming, man. Your your uh, right. April Fool's joke that you've tried to pull on your students, as at least as I understand it, that you got busted for, is also a pretty good story. <laughs> oh, dude, that was like when I first started teaching. Yeah. Are you yeah. talking about the we? Yes. Yeah. 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 I told <laughs> students. I forget. I forget what it was, but I made students think that I had a Nintendo Wii to give away, and it was right when the Wii came out, and you couldn't get them, and kids wanted them so bad, and. Uh, Oh, dude, I can't remember the details, but a kid thought he won a Wii and he came in to collect his Wii and I gave him like a candy bar or something. It was like April Fool's Day because it was April Fool's. And he was pissed and his mom was pissed because they'd already bought a game and he Ooh. opened the game and could <laughs> turn it and why would the teacher mislead kids like this and that? You know, and I was like, who, who comes into a teacher's classroom on April Fool's, my classroom on April Fool's Day expecting a Wii? 
But dude, Dan, no, cool. I actually did give away a PlayStation Five yesterday to a student. What, dude? That's amazing. Yeah, yeah uh, I had a competition for the month of April for whatever students uh, mastered words for the vocab bowl. Back to Larry Lexicon. Um, they could earn raffle tickets for a PlayStation Five, and I raffled it off yesterday and gave it away to a student. So that was super satisfying. Dude, I bet well, it was. That's you know, it, amazing. And that kind of leads into why I was like, man, you should come in and talk on the podcast. You know, because uh, what I admire about you so much is that you just pull the trigger. You know, you just do stuff. And yeah. it, it's what it's why interesting things happen to you. You know, it's one of the reasons, at least, you know, you just take the step and do the thing. And and uh, more more a person does that, the more action is going to happen. You know? Yeah, just go for it. <laughs> where did you get that from why do you why did you have the confidence to do rad shit in your mid-20s or early 20s and and get on a boat and try to live off of it and then like continue to do that as a teacher where'd that come from that's a good question um i think it came from aimlessness when i was younger like i didn't mm. know i never knew what i wanted to be or what i wanted to do I, you know and I, being a teacher was never part of my what I wanted to do list. And I still don't know if it is. I'm just doing it. Um, so but, I said, that's, I think that's like the, you judo something around that because I think a lot of people say, I don't want to, I don't know what to do. And they just want to do anything, mm -hmm. but you've gone like, well, I don't know what to do. So I'm going to do rad stuff. Yeah. That's a good call Ron. Exactly. I don't know what to do, but I'm going to do something. Yeah. A part of it is just stumbling into stuff. So mm -hmm. like, in Hawaii and meeting Dan, I, I don't know if I ever would have gone back to college if I didn't meet Dan because oh. on the boat, we would have, we had so much time to just talk and stuff and mm. a totally different time, you know, when we didn't have phones and things to distract us. Mm. And he just told me about this school he went to and that he was studying journalism and that he wrote for this newspaper and you can write for this newspaper and people will read, read your stuff and how great it was. And I was like, dang, that sounds pretty cool. And like something I could do. Mm. I had tried college before. And failed miserably. Oh my God, I failed miserably. And thought maybe it just wasn't for me. But in retrospect, I look back and realize I just wasn't studying something I was interested in at all, which was government. Uh, boring. Boring. I even <laughs> failed. I took a water skiing class. I even failed that. <laughs> water skiing so, class. <laughs> so then meeting Dan and kind of uh, finding something that really interested me and helped inspire me to go back to school. You know, I'm sad that you you never kept writing. You know, because you, you you I mean you you won best writer at a competitive college. You know, do you ever think about like returning somehow? Or yeah, sometimes I think about it, um, and kind of hope that at some point maybe I will. But I also this past year thought, dang, if I was ever going to write something, this probably would have been the time to do it because I had so much time to, mm -hmm. to write it, and it didn't happen, which kind of makes me feel like maybe this is never going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But do you have ideas for projects that you'd like to do? I'd love to write a sitcom. We, we, need, like sitcom we need to introduce you to, to Matt Brunk, one of our other guests who's, who's like in the middle of like writing a sitcom. Oh, okay. He's got, he's got a podcast episode called the better dad podcast. Okay. He's, he's got a cool, very rad sensibility about him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. You have that kind of thing about you, just like funny shit in weird, in like normal situations. Totally, exactly. Yeah. Like you got to tell the Thai cat story, man, because that freaking cat was legendary. And it was like, it's just a cat, but it ends up reflecting somehow the madness and interesting nature of your just entire life, you know? Like, I don't know what specifically you want me to tell, but I can tell how I got the cat. This, this, what, yeah. what story are you, Daniel, why don't you tell the story? Holy shit, you have a tattoo of your cat. That's amazing. Well, that's the thing. Maybe I haven't mythologized in my mind. Maybe I'll just tell my story and then you can correct me when I'm wrong. Okay. Or okay. don't correct him. <laughs> okay. It ties into the end of, of our, uh, of our, uh, of him getting back from Hawaii in 2000. And as I understand it, he fell in love with someone in his hometown right before he came to Chico to go back to college in hometown Vacaville. And she was like someone who didn't really like him during all of grade school or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, but Ryan grew up, became a handsome human and, you know, maybe got his shit together. Who knows? Well, her mom had a cat that she didn't want. And so Ryan stepped in and said, Hey, I'll take care of the cat. 
And his idea of taking care of the cat, unless I'm mistaken, is to move up to Chico with the cat and move into the house where I lived and then let it free in the in the creek across the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want a cat, dude, but I was like trying to get with this girl, you know, and the mom was like, hey, can you do something with this cat? I was like, yeah, I got a perfect creek for this cat. There's a lot of pussy jokes happening in my mind right now. So there- a lot of a lot of that. So <laughs> did you any 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 success with a girl? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wife. My wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the ultimate success. Yeah, yeah, it all worked out. That's so amazing. <laughs> but Ron, check it out. So the legend of Ty is just starting to begin though. So Ty says, fuck that creek. Like, I'm going back to the house. What? And then yeah. Oh, just oh, kind of... oh, the cat, the cat went to the house where you guys were living. I thought like the cat yeah. went back to Vacaville from Chico. So. <laughs> it's, it's thumbed its way. Uh yeah, no, cat, cat goes across the street or Ryan lets it free. It says, screw that, comes back, and it just starts hanging around the house, becomes the house cat. And then becomes Ryan's cat. Well, Ryan would walk to school. The house was really close to school. And I don't know if this was now or years later, but during Ryan's college career, this cat would follow him to school like a dog and for blocks across streets onto campus. And he just recently told me, I I always told the story as, yeah, we get close to campus and then it would turn around and walk the blocks back. But he recently told me that thing would come all the way up to the building that he went into for his class. Yeah, because I, I didn't even realize he was following me for a while until he showed up at school. And I was like, what are you doing here, dude? And then I realized he would follow me, but he would follow me like 20 feet behind me or something like he wasn't with me. Just behind a tree when you looked behind you. <laughs> yeah. And so we ended up like if I went somewhere, I'd have to lock him up so he wouldn't follow me. And we just became buds and he followed me everywhere. We went camping together. We went hiking together. Dude. Well, check it out, Ron. He would That's come awesome. to like friends of mine in, in like where I lived or my family friends at six, seven, eight miles away drive, bring the cat like you might bring a dog or maybe like more like you bring a child and <laughs> let the cat out of the car. We'd all have a barbecue. The cat would hang out on the property and then get back in the car. I just had that personality. Well, I've never seen a, somebody bring a cat to know, a party man. or a barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> and check it out. That cat just died pretty recently, Ron. That was oh, 20 man. years ago. Yeah, it was like two years ago he died, I think. Two or three oh, years. man. That's a full yeah. life for that cat. Oh, he had yeah. a good ride, man. That's a good one. So, so okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on you a little bit, Ryan. So <laughs> uh, you didn't know what to do. So you start doing cool shit, and, and then cool shit starts happening in your life. Um, I, I'm like, a lot of people are too afraid to do cool shit. Like yeah. take a like take a cat to a barbecue. <laughs> yeah. What gave you permission to take the cat to the barbecue or any of this stuff? Like anything that's happening. Like, do you just not have the thing in your brain that's like, I'm afraid of being judged? Um, I think so. I, I think when I was younger, I did a lot more than I do now. Yeah. Just because now I got like these social structures I gotta fit into as a teacher and a dad, and you know. <laughs> but when I was a kid. And I had no responsibilities and nobody to worry about but myself. I didn't care. I didn't care what anybody thought about me. Hmm. So it was a lot easier back then. Interesting. Yeah. So it did, it did work. I mean, so that part of you, did, like, that was actually, like, to your benefit to just try weird shit because you didn't care. Well, when I first got out of high school and I was trying to figure out what to do next, I was kind of, you know, going through the steps that I thought I was supposed to do that society hmm. tells you to do. I went to hmm. community college. I transferred to a four-year university. And I was miserable. Yeah, and I didn't like it, and I was—I I didn't know what to do. Um, and I felt like everybody else I had known growing up, they—they they were off doing stuff. They got to go places, and I was just home, um, not really doing anything. So I thought, what's something just random and crazy I could do? Mm-hmm. And um, I decided I wanted to be a fisherman in Alaska, right? So, can I just ramble here? What, yeah, 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 of course. Right. You rambling's allowed. Okay. So I decided I was going to go be a fisherman in Alaska. And I told my buddy Dave, hey, I got this idea. You want to come to Alaska and be fisherman? He said, yeah, sure. Let's do it. So we loaded up in his 1973 Camaro and just took off for Seattle. That's where they do all the hiring for for the fishing boats and stuff. And so we take this random road trip up to Seattle. We don't really have any money or anything. And we get an interview with a company called Trident. 
and we interview for a job and the lady right off the bat, she's like, look, you two, don't bullshit me. I, I've been doing this a long time. Anytime two guys are out traveling and show up for a job interview, they fail the drug test and you have to pass the drug test. Don't waste my time. Don't waste my money if you're gonna fail the drug test. I would I definitely like, fail out. right now. Yeah, I'm like, I'm out. I was, I was like, eh, I gave it my best shot, you know? <laughs> but Dave, Uncle Dave was like, well, I'll pass the drug test, which is how he talks, right, Dan? Yes. <laughs> so, and so he, he decided, this was a Friday, that he was going to drink water all weekend, like massive amounts of water and take this drug test. And he did. He drank so much water though, that he like, I thought I was gonna have to take him to the emergency room at one point because he was drinking so much water. Yeah, that's a thing. You can kill yourself. People it was have done insane. that. He was, I had huge jugs of water. You, so, you can, no, I'm serious. You can, I, I think what happens real quick, I think it happens, you, you deplete your body of nutrients. There's uh, some distance runners who have done that in, in uh, college. They drink so much water, they kill themselves. Oh, anyways, just enjoy so that. So don't try to fake the <laughs> drug test out by drinking okay. too much water. But he passed the drug test. But he passed the drug <laughs> test. So he passed the drug test on Monday and they're like, well, we're shipping you out to Alaska tomorrow. And so the next day he took off to Alaska and left me stranded in Seattle. I was like, well, what am oh. I going to do now? So um, I thought I'd just see where the road would take me and start hitchhiking. What'd you do with his car? Where'd he do with it? Did he drive? Oh, it he has an aunt. Actually, he has an aunt that lives in Portland and he drove the car back to Portland, stored it with his aunt and then took a bus back to Seattle. Huh. Which in retrospect, I'm like, why didn't I take the car? And yeah. I, don't, I don't remember why. <laughs> Cause you're on <laughs> drugs. That's why. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, Obviously. <laughs> I just started making my way across country and um, ended up in um, Michigan. And I was, I, Whoa, what? you're hitchhiking in the year 2000, 1999. Oh, is this 2000? This would have been like 1998. Okay. And so I ended up in Michigan. I had a whole old high school friend that lived there and kind of uh, hit him up and said, Hey, do you got a, a place I could sleep for a couple nights? He said, yeah, sure. So I, I stayed at his place for a little bit. Hi. And um, I haven't thought about all this in a long time. So I gotta, I gotta recollect the memories here. Well, at one point, I know that I was on the freeway in Michigan, and um, I was going past a car with a few girls in it, dude. and I had my camera with me, and I thought, I'm going to take a picture of this girl off the car window on the freeway as we go by. So we go by this car, and I take a photo of this girl, and she pulls up a camera and takes a, a photo of me. I was like, oh, what do we got here? Okay. <laughs> and so I lean, I lean out the window, and I scream, hey, what's your phone number? What's your phone number? And she writes her phone number down on a matchbook and hands it to me out the window on the freeway in Michigan. As you guys are cruising down the freeway? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the next day, I'm like, I should call, I'm going to call this girl, see what's up with this girl from the freeway. So I call this phone number and she tells me she's going to school at the University of Michigan and she lives in Ann Arbor and she's got this little studio apartment. And I'm like, I'll be there. I'm going to come see you. So I make my way down to Ann Arbor. Just hitchhike my way down there. And uh, this girl's like, yeah, here's my place. Here's my studio apartment. And I'm like, I live here now. This is where I live now. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> I basically, you don't know all this, Dan. And so, no, <laughs> so I'm, I'm like bunking up with this girl for a bit. And we kind of have a little romantic thing, I guess. And she tells me that, by the way, cut me off at any point, guys. No, I'm enjoying this. Keep going. She tells me that um, her parents operate this like Christian summer camp and they need a lifeguard for the oh, summer. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm your guy. This is perfect. I'm your guy. <laughs> and so I go and I meet her parents and they hire me to work as the lifeguard at this Christian summer camp and send me to this whole lifeguard training school, right? So I spend this summer um, being a lifeguard at summer camp, it was actually really fun. I was a camp counselor and lifeguard and it was super fun. And after the summer ended, uh, I kind of thought I was ready to start heading home. Maybe was done with my little adventure, but this girl was like, no, let's move in together. Let's get more serious. Whoa. Yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I didn't know what else to do. So I did. And I got a job as an assistant kindergarten teacher. I would, I would like huh. a private school where I was an assistant kindergarten teacher, which really just means I would 
we cut up snacks and stuff. I didn't really do <laughs> they were kids, you know? Yeah. And so I did that for a school year. And then um, at some point, this relationship with this girl blew up. And I guess we realized we hated each other. <laughs> I said, okay, I think I'm ready to go home now. It had been like over a year since I'd been home. And so I started making my way back to Vacaville and I got home. And the second I got home, I was like, oh my God, I am so bored here. I was living at my mom's house with no plans, nothing to do. And that's when I decided I'm just going to go to Hawaii and see what happens. So I bought a plane ticket to Hawaii. I'd never been there. Spent all the money I had on this plane ticket and flew to Hawaii. And that's how I ended up in Hawaii and met you, Dan. That's what led up to that. Adventure. I got I Daniel, that, that I appreciate you telling me all that, um, Ryan. I'm, I, I pause before your name because I want to say Larry so bad. I'm really <laughs> trying so hard not to say Larry. Daniel, uh, when you say you're living for six months, is that what you said? Six months or six yeah. weeks? Six months. Six months on a beach. Yeah. Like a was, homeless dude? Like what it was, you, what Yeah, mean? it was interesting, man. I, I was, I was, uh, that trip, I was 20 years old and I'd been in college for a couple of years. I was injured because I was a runner and it was kind of where like a lot of my life came to a head because I was just a runner. That's all I had going on in my life. And when I got hurt, it was like I had no identity. But so, so, so I know some of these details about you being a runner, but yeah. when you say you were just a runner, you were like recording your mileage down to the 10th of a mile. Yeah, I was pretty obsessive. Uh, and you had like, at that point, like, 15,000 miles logged or something. Insane. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. I would just know my weekly mileage was always a big deal. And, you know, I ran for Chico state, um, was pretty good, but I just ran obsessively. Ryan lived with all of us in the track house. So he kind of saw some of this. Yeah. Um, but I would run like hundred mile weeks and that's about 14 miles a day. Um, double days, you'd be swimming to in the weight, in the, uh, lifting weights. Um, it was intense, man. Um, really intense runs, long runs, 15 mile runs at like, that we get down to like six minute pace, you know, it was like pretty fast, crazy stuff. But, and not that's, surprisingly, I hurt myself. <laughs> dude, that's super crazy. I mean, I know like just running here at Forest Park on the big paths when like the college team passes us, Yeah. you know, out on a long run. And, and I, and I look like I'm like, my feet are definitely on the ground at the same time. Like there's no (laughs) run. It's just like slightly faster than walking. And those guys blow past and it looks like they're like in, in machines. Yeah, it's true. That was my nickname when I was in high school was a machine. Um, of course it was. Uh, see, I shouldn't say that. There's Probably no certain, circles, <laughs> certain circles where that's still the name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so I hurt myself and I needed to find myself. So I went to Hawaii too for, for similar, in a similar type of situation. But mine was more like I was a wreck. I was running from myself. I needed to get away from, it was like kind of serious. Um, but when I did that, I discovered I had an adventurous streak. You know, I didn't mind sleeping on in a, I was actually, I slept consistently in a, in a soccer park that I was just on the big Island and went to this little park. Um, cause it's a really nice little area to run, but it's a soccer park. And I would like get in the little corner and I've had to dodge the sprinklers for a couple of days, like figure out the sprinkler, you know, situation. So I could be in a place where I wouldn't get wet, but I would like wake up in the middle of the night, getting hit by sprinklers and working out the timing there. Finally found a place in the morning, the joggers would be coming by and like, you know, the like tourists, not tourists, but the people who live there, just like howly white, like just jogger rich people. And, um, and at first they were like, like kind of snide toward me and, you know, just the homeless guy. But then I would say good morning and we kind of got along and within a couple of weeks, it was like, morning, Dan, morning, Fred. You know, (laughs) I'd be like getting out of my little uh, backpack and I ended up getting a job at a bakery. And so I was a kind of a working kind of man, but I was sleeping in the soccer field. <laughs> and then you, and then Ryan, you ended up in Hawaii and, and then how'd you get on a boat? Like, where'd you find this boat? Did you steal it? Well, when I first got to Hawaii, I, I, I slept on the beach. I did the same thing Dan was doing. Wow. Oh, and this is actually bizarre. I was on the beach one day and somebody, I hear somebody yell my name, Ryan, is that Ryan? And I turn around What? and it's this girl I went to high school with. <laughs> Come on. Bless you serious. Yeah, dude. And um, I'm just, she chats me up and I'm like, yeah, I'm sleeping here on the beach. No big deal. Good to see you. 
she says, well, I have a spare room. You can come, you can come stay. The the theme in your life. Yeah, but this wasn't a romantic thing at all. So I went and she gave me a a room for for a while until I could find a job. And eventually I found a job at Aloha Tower um, at a smoothie shop, Tropical Blend Smoothies. Oh, you were dressed up as a banana or something. No, 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 I just made smoothies. But you you had a job. Okay, yeah, sorry. Oh, I was dressed up as Jesus. That, that was a different job. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. That's right. Yeah. Is that a church? Is that a church? He's a lifeguard. He's a lifeguard. <laughs> Jesus can walk on water. That's pretty good, Ron. <laughs> the smoothie shop was next door to um, Hooters. And so I'd always be like, oh, you're a Hooters girl. Here you go. Free smoothies for Hooters girls, of course. And then I'd go watch football at Hooters and uh, get free beers. It was a great trade off. Dude, that's a great trade. But but smoothie shop went out of business, so I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I worked there long enough though to um, save up some money, and then I called up once again my friend Dave, man, the same guy that went off to be a fisherman in Alaska. I called him up again, and was like, hey, I, you know, I'm in Hawaii. I was thinking maybe we could uh, buy a boat and just have a good time out here. And so once again, Dave was like, let's do it, and he put in half the money. I put in half the money. And we just bought a little like. Five thousand dollar sailboat that we lived on. How 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 long was that thing? Like thirty feet? Oh, twenty six feet. Twenty six feet. Twenty six foot Columbia. Yeah. Is that yeah. The, the the style of the the boat? A Columbia. Columbia is a brand. Yeah. A brand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, Ron, have you? I mean, because I kind of the theme of this conversation, right? Is it's the way me and uh, Ryan have always connected is a, uh, you know, just casting ourselves out into the world and you know. Um, trusting that things would work out yeah Um, and they have you know like really well in a lot of cases and we could talk forever about those stories um i've done the same thing on uh several continents you know just hitchhiking around letting the people connecting with the people it's awesome i love it personally but i was curious ron like have you ever done that in any way or Uh, no 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 (laughs) i mean I, i i mean i've had my fair share of adventures too that but but they're they're just at a different degree. Uh, I mean, I I um, I mean, maybe the closest thing was right after high school. My buddy and I bought cheap. Um, I, I graduated high school in Dallas, Texas. Um, even though I only had gone to high school there for just a few months, and while I was there, I got into rock climbing. Even though there's not a single cliff anywhere near Dallas. There happened to be at the time the tallest indoor rock gym in the country based in the little town I lived in, which was a suburb of Dallas called Carrollton. And me and one of the other guys uh, bought Mexican bus tickets down to northern Mexico. And, you know, I was freaking 18 years old, you know, drinking beers on. I was getting the guys on the on the bus to buy me beers down there and. Uh, going into Mexico and into Monterey and then walking around till I find a bus and then taking a bus to this little town called Hildalgo and then climbing, climbing until I couldn't climb anymore. And around there would like hitchhike locally. And I remember one night uh, I was coming back from this little town and this like old Oldsmobile pulled up next to us and the door just swings open all this pot smoke, like barrel, like barrels out of it. And there's no dome light in the car. Like you can't see anything in the car. And, and we just see the thing. And I, and I just see like a hand, like kind of reach out of the door and like, give us this. And my friend and I look at each other and we were just like, this is a terrible idea, but let's do it. And we jump in the back seat and um, we can't understand what they're saying. Like we kind of at a certain point realized like that, oh, there's a couple teenage boys in here. And he starts saying, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy and and we're like what does he what does Jeremy mean and he hands us he had he had a little earbud like you have on Daniel and he hands it back to us and it was Pearl Jam's Jeremy that he was listening to and he was so stoked on it he had to share it with us and he just gave us a ride to the thing but I that's my only hitchhiking joke or joke my only hitchhiking experience I've picked I've picked up hitchhikers plenty of times Mm, yeah yeah. yeah, it's I think it's safer than people think, you know, I mean, I, I've, I've, you know, maybe it's because I'm a, a white dude, you know, and I have some, you know, my, I usually have money, you know, it's not like I'm in a really tough spot, but uh, I've gotten hundreds of rides in my life and 
Very few have been dangerous. There have been some dangerous ones. I actually wrote an article about one for the uh, paper that we were on because I was hiking. Do you remember that article, Ryan? Oh. Yeah, I was hitchhiking back from Alaska and I got picked up by, okay, longer story, not too much longer. Had a wedding to be at in, in, in Portland, Oregon, and I was in Anchorage, Alaska, and the wedding was in like two and a half days, and it takes about two and a half days to get down by car. So I didn't have a car. I was just hitchhiking, but I got into a trucker and that was my plan because they drive all night. And so long story short, I get picked up by this trucker and he's after a few hours, he starts acting really creepy. And he's telling me this cryptic story about how Orca will, will play with their, uh, with baby seals, you know, and toy with them Oh shit! before they kill them. <laughs> oh Jesus. And keep, yeah, keep in mind this, in this stretch of the Alcan, there has been a serial killer recently and it was just awful. But like, I was very bold and I was like, I'm not, I don't think this guy is a serial killer, you know, but he's definitely threatening me right now in a weird way, but I needed a ride. I needed to get to this this wedding so i just kind of stuck it out and <laughs> hung out with this guy for about a day and a half and by the time we left he was really somber and quiet and he was kind of like talking to me like i was his son you know like he had a son issue with his actual uh, son uh, and he took me out to breakfast and he just like watched me while i was eating and it was really sad and weird um and then say goodbye and i made it to the wedding on time <laughs> Dude, it's super sketchy. I would never do that now. Like that's the dumbest thing I've ever done. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's tough. So uh, now, Ryan, now that you're you know forty something, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, what what kind of rad shit have you been doing lately? How did I mean? Like, it sounds like Larry is the rad shit that you've been doing. Like yeah. the persona, I should say. Yeah, I mean that's very work related, you yeah. know. And it's been it's been super fun, but but it's work. So I don't know if I'd put that in the in the rad shit category. Well, what about your Dave Matthews experience recently? Well, okay, so the Dave Matthews experience is the raddest rad shit because you know I've been I've been in deep for a long time, Dave. You're a it's mega like, fan. You're a mega yes, Matthews. It's this thing in my life that brings me so much joy, and it always has. <laughs> And no matter what the situation is, it's just always there for me, you know, this music. I love it. I hope everybody has something like that in their life. Um, but recently, Sirius XM did a, a request show with Dave Matthews. So you could request a song. And I thought, oh, that would be fun to make a request with my students, um, even though I had to do it over Zoom, just kind of clowning around in my Larry Lexicon persona. And so we made this request and I thought there was no chance that the request would get honored because we requested a super random song. And does anybody listen? I thought the student's acting was terrible. In the video, I was like, oh, this is, this is like cringeworthy, terrible, you guys. Maybe that was actually endearing to them. They're like, oh, yeah. bless their hearts. <laughs> it might have been. But I submitted the video and I had zero expectations submitting it. And like 10 minutes before the show started, I got an email saying they were going to honor the request. And so uh, I was nice. super excited, turned on the radio, and they played um, the audio from the video I sent in. And then Dave started to sing the song, and then he sang my name in the song. So yeah. I'm officially in a Dave song. Yeah, I'm that's pretty the, strong. You know, that's yeah. strong. That's strong, man. And he did it really cool, too. Like, yeah. uh, you know, it's a long instrumental start, and like for a minute or two. And then Dave just goes, Mr. Price. Yeah. And he does it again. Mr. Price. It was fucking awesome. Were you kid, were your students stoked for you? Or were they just like, oh, yeah. that's cool? A oh, good question. So stoked. So stoked. Oh, good. Yeah. That's great. Man. How much it meant to me, so. I mean, yeah. it sounds like some of the red shit also is just the rapport that you've been able to build with kids. Yes. Yeah, that is um is it is it from your cat tattoo is it because you're the kind of guy that would get his like lifelong cat tattooed on him and that's what a I cool think, teacher does i think that's probably part of it part i of think it. um i don't think there's very many good teachers <laughs> like now that i've been in this job for a long time yeah i can't believe how many bad teachers there are and that's not i don't mean that as a knock it's just the job's so freaking hard there's so many components to it and it's so it's hard extremely to be hard good at every element 
of the job. And I would say there's only like God, two or three people I've met in my life that I thought were like amazing teachers. And I'm not one of them. But I do have little components of my job that I do better than pretty much anybody. And one of them is student relationships and building that rapport with students. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Classroom management. I'm really good at that. So yeah. You can I, I you can tell the way your kids play with you in the in the videos that I saw that they like you and respect yeah. you. Like you can tell on their faces, like that, like yeah. kids have that, like they're they're unable to hide how they feel about something on their in yeah. their body language. And yeah. and it's it's obvious like that they're, they're very comfortable. It's obvious that the the killing the puppy joke was in good nature and they were like part of it and and you know it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of my, my idea is my goal really is just to make school a place where the kids want to be, you know, cause so yeah. many kids don't want to be at school, but I want it to be something they look forward to. Oh, I got Mr. Price's class today. That's going to be great. You know, and if I can do that and make them want to be there, then everything else is much, much easier. Yeah. Just offer Xboxes as, or Wii's as, <laughs> as often as you want. Yeah. That helps. Or right into your sitcom. I think you should. I think we need to hold uh, Ryan to this, Daniel, and make him make nice. him write. Ryan, Daniel, and I are in a writing group together. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Ron, it was funny because when he showed me Larry Lexicon for the first time, I think it was about a year ago or so. Yeah. I was like, this, this is funny, and there's a lot of room for this character. And so I just like took it upon myself to write a little episode from you know just to have fun with uh-huh. it, and I like sent it off to him, and I was kind of proud of it. Like it was really fun to write. And I felt like it was funny. Never heard from him. Just crickets. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Do you have any idea how many scripts he gets a day? <laughs> that was the feel, man. <laughs> Got to talk to your agent. Where's your dog? Where's the dog you were going to kill? Is that your agent? <laughs> oh, man. I remember you doing that, but I don't remember the uh, specifics of the episode. Well, remember, you're the one that won Best Writer, not me. <laughs> Yeah, Man, no. I need to see a piece of this writing. I need to. We need to get this out. Of the, out it's of the super open. fun. Yeah, I think it's a really fun premise. You got all these kids and this f- asshole teacher to play around. It was, is your is your uh, sitcom idea kind of like a, a what was that? Um, Welcome back, Cotter, the teacher sitcom from the seventies, late seventies, early eighties. A little bit. I mean, it's very it's very kind of um, uh, self indulgent, I guess, because it's really just about me. The sitcom but you know that's what i know best so dude i wanna this you needs want to, to happen my, you want to hear my idea yeah yeah let's hear it pitch oh, it pitch oh, someone's it. gonna hear this okay so the larry lexicon thing that i did is really what made me think oh i'm gonna start a sitcom like this because yeah i've seen videos of like teachers going off the rails where a student has like the hidden camera and it's yeah teacher. that's kind of what inspired my videos where it's like oh this teacher is just off the rails and doesn't yeah. know he's being recorded so um, I started making videos like that. And at the same time, I was doing the Cal Dinger videos with softball. Dude, by the way, Cal Dinger, I'm going to steal that name. If I need to be like, have a, have, have like a anonymous pseudonym at like a, I don't know, cryptocurrency party <laughs> or Dinger? something that Cal Dinger is going to be my go-to. That's fantastic. <laughs> cryptocurrency. <laughs> well, my idea for the show is that, um, so I'll, I play myself and, or somebody plays me. And I'm desperate to go viral with these softball videos. And nobody likes them. I'm not getting any traction with the softball videos. It's causing tension at home with my wife because I'm spending money on, you know, microphones and, all, you know, just equipment for making these yeah. videos. That nobody's viewing. Um, but meanwhile, in the classroom, um, I'm ranting and raving like Larry Lexicon. And I really am being recorded without, without knowing it. And I'm totally viral but I'm oblivious to it. So while I'm trying to get viral for my softball videos, I am viral as a teacher for being just this awful, awful teacher. Wait, what? You were really ranting? No, this someone? is his idea. This is his idea for that. Oh, jeez, man. Cup. I'm sorry. I totally and actually, this is, I think this is a great idea, dude. It you was need to write the pilot, like man. <laughs> I know. I started to write it, man. So, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going viral without knowing it while trying to go viral. And at some point, I realize that um, I've gone viral in the classroom. I see a video somehow. I don't really know the specifics. And it ends up turning me around as a teacher because I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's embrace this now. And I start making the Larry Lexicon videos 
in class, right? So now I'm making these, these videos in class and connecting with the students, and now I'm uh, improving as a teacher. Okay, now pause. This is where it gets a little bit more bizarre. So another thing I did was I made, I've made little shows for vocab as Larry Lexicon already called You Larry. They're on YouTube. They're not very good. But um, the idea is that I make these little mini TV episodes for students and I have different teachers star in them so the students can see teachers just being goofy and being different. And in the TV show, I would, in the sitcom, I would make this show in the classroom with the students so the actors playing teachers in the show would then play actors in the video. Oh man, I don't even know how to describe it. I get it. I get it. I yeah, get what you're yeah, saying. Too. I get yeah. what you're saying. I like it. I think they should do this. This is very I, I, of our time. This is very of our time. And if you don't get this shit done, I'm going to come to Vacaville and start just yelling Larry Lexicon from high school to high school. I, what I need is people that are experienced and know how to write a sitcom to help me. I need to sit, out, sit down at a table with people that know what they're doing. Because I'll start writing and be like, man, I don't really know how to write dialogue or anything like that. I just have an idea and uh, kind of know what direction I want it to go. Interesting. Hook, hook up with Brunk. Brunk? Uh, another guest we had. Oh, on. the guy we were talking about earlier who's oh, okay, writing a TV yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look I'll up, connect Brunk. to you guys. Okay. I'll connect to you guys. Very interesting. Uh, Daniel. If, yeah. If you um, had to give uh, Larry a, <laughs> a, a uh, what's your favorite? What's your favorite Larry bit? I was gonna say a review, but you can't do that on social media. You don't review shit. You just like forward it. <clears throat> well, I guess kind of the it, my favorite bit is speaks to a point that I think is interesting about Ryan in general and relevant to why we do this, have these conversations, which is you know he just like i said just does things it seems you know you're like this too ron you just kind of like live live a charmed life you have you live experiences that seem like they're out of a movie a lot you know i mean just little scenes little moments it's it's really interesting I, i've had similar times in my life where that happens for sure and i think it has to do with something about casting yourself out into mm -hmm. the unknown and the yeah. world kind of starts the world can work with that you know I, I think so that's my experience i think so too yeah well, these days I start to think, well, is that because I'm like totally privileged in all these ways, you know? So it's kind of becoming a little bit muddier, but uh, the truth is, is that that's happened. But anyways, my point is, is that at this stage in Ryan's life, it's like some of him doing that are starting to build on each other. And so uh, he has like a pretty strong Bay Area sports um, love, you know, and he had a, his first, the first thing that went viral for him, as far as I know, is this video of his son, uh, Johnny, when he was like two or three after the 49ers lost. And the one that we play at the beginning of this episode. Oh, yeah. We're going to attack it on today. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so that one. Thank you for the reminder. Yeah. You know, and stuff like that. Well, then he also is a big A's fan. And somehow Larry Lexicon caught the uh, attention of the Oakland A's. And the Oakland A's were like, hey, can we send our mascot into your class? And can you do some skits with, you know, with, with the elephant? And I just think that's great. I loved it. So that's that amazing. Was my favorite. That's amazing. That was a good day at work. Ryan, you seem like pretty nonchalant about this shit happening in your life. And I think like a lot of kids would be so stoked to have their teacher <laughs> kind of TikTok famous. Like, but you, but you're like, ah, it just, it seems normal to you. Um, yeah. On, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it does seem kind of normal because it hasn't changed my life at all. Nothing's sure. Different. Sure. Like, sure made any money on this i'm not walking down the street and people recognizing me or anything i'm still just me yeah. so it's kind of bizarre because sometimes people will make make it out to be a big deal like oh you're tiktok famous in this and that and i'm like what does it mean it means <clears> nothing <throat> so it's fun it's just fun it's it fun means that you're a good teacher so, yeah and it, it does make me feel like i'm a good teacher so yeah yeah that's cool. So I we got to ask, man, uh, uh, one of the best stories that you've ever lived is the story of your grandfather. Uh, oh, yeah. I wanted to hear this. Can, oh. you, can you lay it out for us? Um, yeah. OK. Boy, that's a segue. I know. So well, I just I got the sense that Ron was about to wrap wrap us up and I wanted to sneak it. We need this. We need I, this grandpa. Story. Yeah, yeah. I, I requested it. At the beginning. <laughs> okay. OK, so the grandpa story. 
we had a family reunion. It's the only family reunion I can remember us ever having. And uh, this was 10 years ago. And it was in my aunt's house in the middle of nowhere up in gold country. And so um, the big, the big news at this reunion was that my grandpa was going to be there who didn't really leave his house much at this point in his life. He was getting older, you know, and kind of confined to home. So I show up at my aunt's house out in the middle of nowhere and my grandpa is just in a great mood and like, he's kind of partying. And by partying, I mean like the way an 85 year old man would party by eating pizza and drinking Michelob Ultras and things like that, you know. So it gets to be about 11 o'clock at night and my grandpa's still awake and going strong. He's always loved cards. And so uh, I said, let's play some poker. I uh, brought some poker cards. We can set up a poker game, grandpa. And he said, yep. So I set up a poker <laughs> table. The worst poker table, table, the worst poker table ever it had like wood slats. So the cards would fall through the table all the time. It sucked. We set up the table and we sat down to play and uh, I'll never forget where everybody was sitting. I was sitting at the right. My brother was at my left. My dad was at the head of the table. His like fourth wife who gives a shit was over here. <laughs> my cousin Garen was diagonal from me and directly across from me was my grandpa. So we start playing uh, Texas Hold. And my grandpa wasn't doing so well. We were pretty much just, I don't know, fleecing the guy. And I was like, oh, he's just, he's just old. He's lost it. So I get this hand where I had an ace high straight. And I was like, oh my God, I feel so good about this hand. So I, you know, splashed some money in the pot. My brother called. My dad folded. His wife folded. My cousin folded. And my grandpa raised me. And I was like, you're so dumb. You're so dumb raising me right now. I got an ace high straight. So, uh, and let's keep in mind, right? Like your grandpa is highly revered in this family. Like, yeah. 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 Well, you know, I, I just, I just say that because, you know, you kind of sound like you're looking forward to, no, I'm just kidding. I know you love him. I, yeah, I do. Yeah. But, so, well, I matched, I matched the pot. My brother matches the pot and, uh, we flip the last card over and it's an ace. So now there's two aces showing oh on the table, but I still have an ace high straight. I feel good about it. Like, okay. So uh, we go through the whole thing again and my grandpa goes all in this time. And I'm like, this guy, <laughs> this guy. So I go all in, my brother goes all in. We flip our cards and I remember being very, um, I don't know, ecstatic about my ace high straight, like ace high straight, you know? My brother also has an ace high straight, asshole. Well, my grandpa flips over his cards and he has four aces, he had pocket aces. So he has four aces, which is an unbelievable hand. And everybody at the table goes crazy. <laughs> my grandpa has this, just the biggest shit eating grin on his face, <laughs> you know, that he just schooled his two grandchildren. <laughs> and he stands up. And he leans forward and wraps his arm. There's so many chips on the table. Wraps his arms around the chips and starts to drag them towards him. Stops, looks up and goes, it's bad, boys. And he died. What? What? That's how my grandpa died. Oh, my gosh. It's my favorite. It's my favorite Dude. memory of my grandpa. It's I'm, I've got him goosebumped right now. I'm... <laughs> That's... I'm Brutal, man. That's the maybe the best way, one of the best ways an old guy can go out. Yes. Yeah. I guess you could have a flood, a royal flush, maybe. I don't know what, what makes that better. No, I just get holy crap. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 Uh well, what was your grandpa's name? Johnny. Johnny. Here's to you, Johnny. Ah, thank you. Appreciate you, man. That's a good one. I appreciate that. Ryan, you're a cool guy. I appreciate getting to meet you. Thanks, Ron. Uh, I love meeting folks who are who are up for adventure. My my actually the the business my wife and I have together is actually called Romance and Adventure, and those are the kinds of adventures that I'm talking about. Like when I when I think of a real adventure, just like life happening for us and rad shit by just us saying yes, and you're doing that. So I can't wait to to have a bit part a cameo in your uh, in your uh, TV show. Oh yeah, you're in, dude. <laughs> yeah, and and Ryan too, man. You should know. <clears throat> you know, I really appreciate who you are. It's inspired me 
to be more like that too. It really has. I, I literally will make different actions based on how you live your life. It's been awesome to witness. <laughs> You're so dumb. W W L L. Hey, hey, D. Ron, look, look behind him. He's got a, he's got one of my paintings behind him. Oh yeah. It looks nice. good. Oh, Thanks for putting really it up, nice. man. Well yeah, dude. Done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> I like it. Well, cool, man. Well, I appreciate you joining us, Ryan. Thank you so much. L where can people find Larry Lexicon? Um, at Larry Lexicon on TikTok and Instagram. Awesome. I will give you a follow. That's so good. All, right. All right. See you, Ryan. Take care. See you next See you time. Thanks. Bye-bye. Welcome to the field dressing. Today we have yes. <laughs> Ryan, better known as uh, Larry Lexicon in the wild and social media wild, who maybe told the best story about a grandpa I've ever heard ever. Just a quick note that yeah. pause, that was the most pregnant pause I've ever experienced, right? Right before we started the field dressing. <laughs> I do like, what I can. I do what I it's can. Like, the stars and the planet were hovering in space Everyone and the, is like, then the field dressing starts <laughs> um, this is right the, before the moment the buddha was <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> right before jesus cried his first cry at birth <laughs> that's where <laughs> that's where i'm supposed to exist all the time all the time all it takes is <laughs> all it takes is ronald to be to shut the hell up for a few minutes and everyone feels better <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah, that story about his grandpa. What a great story. Yep. And I, I riffed with it too. Can I tell a story on top of the story? Yeah, yeah. Didn't you write a song or something about it? Yeah, it's actually got a really funny, very Ryan Price ending to huh. it. So when I met Ryan, uh, you know, he's like that. He likes the jam band, you know. Um, Dave Matthews would be a jam band, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Fish. he like, yeah. Yeah, well, there's a jam band called OAR or... They did this song called Crazy Game of Poker. And <clears throat> that song was one of, I, I've always said it's one of his favorites. He, mm. he just liked it, whatever. I associated it with him. Yeah. And it's about a guy named Johnny. So it's a crazy game of poker about a guy named Johnny. His grandfather's name's Johnny. His grandfather yeah. died and made a, this the craziest game of poker. So I just decided like a f five years ago <laughs> that I was going to rewrite all the lyrics to that song to tell the story of his grandpa's death, right? And I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm not a songwriter, but I, I play guitar and I was like, I'm kind of, you know, I'm a writer. So I figured I could do it, but it was just hard. I interviewed all of the people at that table that he was saying behind Ryan's back. He didn't know. Oh, wow. Interviewed Ryan, told him I had a project, interviewed his parents. Well, he, I'm sorry. He did know I interviewed him. Didn't yeah. know why. Interviewed his brother, his cousin, his dad. They all like got to a point where they were crying on the phone with me because it was so meaningful to him that night. Oh, wow. And his dad, he didn't say like his dad's like an ex Navy SEAL, and his grand. It, it's just these are. Yeah, it was pretty powerful. So, anyways, but I just couldn't really put it together. Like it was just a hard project, and I kept putting it off. I'd work on it for a couple of days, you know, every year or so. Well, it, it came to a point about a year ago where the ten year anniversary was anniversary was coming up. Mm -hmm. So it was. 2000 it was 2011 it happened in march and 2021 march which mm. just passed it was a 10-year anniversary and i was like i'm gonna drop it on that day mm. that became my deadline so i finally got my act together and um got all the notes and put like a couple of weeks of pretty intense work on this thing like sometimes five six hours you know in a day you know working on this story it was an eight minute song in real life it was an eight minute song i just made it eight minutes also and really fleshed it out put all of these details in it. And I was really proud of it. It was definitely as good as I could do. Had real songwriters come in and take a look at it and kind of guide me. And uh, it was really satisfying. Learned it, sang it, recorded it. And on the anniversary of it, I gave it to Ryan. And it was like, he was like, well, that was cool, <laughs> you know? And I'm thinking that his family's going to get it and they're going to yeah. all be like so touched and it's going to be this incredible thing. And he goes, he goes, yeah, grandpa dying kind of broke the family apart. <laughs> <laughs> I have not actually spoken to the rest of my family since that day. <laughs> it, it, it's no joke. Like he, not the whole family, but yeah. like it's a thing. And it was like, I don't even know if, half the people at that table even have listened to it like it meant That's i don't want to say it meant nothing his brother texted me and stuff but it was, it was like 
definitely unexpected. good effort Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way to put it in there man <laughs> way to live that fantasy just follow such, through with it such is life you know that's what life you know i was trying to do the ryan price thing you just do the thing and then amazing thing happens but not so much <laughs> i mean the, i think the amazing thing is that you finish the, the you know the deal i think that like morgan and i always say the key to a really great vacation is low expectations yeah and and uh that's the i think the thing that's hardest for me to manage is like i get like you where i'm like oh then this is gonna happen yeah. and so and so is gonna be super stoked <laughs> and then i'm gonna feel like the hero or whatever yeah and, and as i've gotten older i'm just like i don't know what's gonna happen i don't know what's gonna happen by the end of the day hey it's okay i i it's not even okay it's perfect like yeah i'm sorry their family isn't talking but i don't need my expectations to be met to um you know embrace the 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 what life throws at you and circumstances yeah. like that it was funny and it was so fun writing a song and playing it and maybe it'll mean something more later on you never know could have been too tough to, for him to listen to could have been he, like yeah yeah hey. maybe or maybe he's just dead inside i think <laughs> i think i think part of it is like it was almost like a little weird that I put that much effort into it so long afterwards. <laughs> How do I repay this very, very personal experience? If you're looking into his eyes, like your own eyes are watering. <laughs> I, know, I know, man. I was like, maybe I should, maybe I should rethink my life a little bit here. Dude, okay. I spend my time. You know, it kind of reminds me, it reminds me a little bit of like the awkward conversations I would imagine you would have hitchhiking where uh, where people uh, feel like you have a bond and or maybe you don't like did you ever feel something like did anyone uh, just start spilling the beans to you oh i bond quickly man i i i can definitely oh, that's what made me a good journalist that's why i won best reporter that you know back in college i i can definitely bring things out generally in people by generally expressing who i am you know it's just yeah. it's nice i really like that having that ability and so yeah, I would get really close with people hitchhiking and I had, I would have friends for years afterwards from people just picking me up on the road. Hmm. Hmm. Were you ever like, how do I get this guy to shut up or this woman? Oh, I'm whoever. sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I've been like hit on when I didn't want to be hit on and, <clears throat> you know, take me, you know, offered, um, you know, drugs that I didn't maybe want offered drugs that I did want. And then it becomes like, okay. But now you're like hanging out at someone's house for an afternoon that you like, didn't really, you know, <laughs> I'm like, can I get a ride out of here? I'd <laughs> like, really like am to I leave still hitchhiking with instead you? Instead of doing drugs. I, I used to give this guy a ride home. I, I was a cook out of college. So I went and got a theology degree, but I, I actually, for a brief moment, thought I wanted to be a cook, like a chef. And, and so I started cooking for P.F. Chang's and like from zero experience to cooking at P.F. Chang's yeah, in wow. like a, a few months. And they had just opened up. They were, they were wildly popular, like hours long waiting list to get into this place. It's really funny to me now how popular it was back then, but yeah. in the early 2000s, this shit was crazy. Anyway, I, I used to give this guy, this cook a ride home. And he used to tell me the craziest fucking stories. Like that made me uncomfortable listening to them. And like, it got to the point where I was like, I don't know if I want to hang out with you anymore. But I kind of, we got in this routine where like after we'd clock out, he's like waiting yeah. for me to give him a ride home. I'm like, uh, I don't want to hear yeah. another story about how you pissed on a girlfriend, like physically pissed on a girlfriend. I'm done with this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, yeah. I, 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 people open up to me a lot too. And I, and, yeah, I can see and, that. And sometimes I'm cool with it, but I've had to learn how to like shut myself down a little. Hmm going into cover like with a masseuse i gotta be real careful a massage therapist before i go in because sometimes i just want to chill out i don't want to hear the yeah the whole story yeah having boundaries around how much you open up yeah I'm, i think i'm i know i think i'm definitely exercising that a little bit more these days too yeah when's the last time you hitchhiked oh i'm um, probably pretty long ago i i hitched i want to uh I hitchhike, I've had some epic hitchhiking sessions. I was in Australia in Melbourne, which is on the East Coast, basically, mm -hmm. Southeast Coast. And uh, it, Australia is almost the exact same square mileage, uh, square kilometerage as 
uh, the United States. They're yeah. really similar sizes and they're kind of similar shapes too. Yeah. And so Melbourne is sort of like an Antipodean San Francisco. And on the east, on the west coast of Australia is Perth. And I had yeah. an uh, Alaskan friend said, hey, if you ever get to Australia, go, you know, have dinner with my friends. And so I called them up when I was in Australia. I said, hey, I would love to have dinner. I'm, you know, Harlow's friend. And they're like, come on out. So I just grabbed my bag, walked out my back door, stuck a thumb out, hitchhiked 3,000 miles over to Perth, had dinner with them. How long the did night. that take you? Well, that's the thing. I had dinner with them, spent the night, came back. That's like hitchhiking across the United States, right? Holy shit. There and back. And I yeah. did it in, in nine days. You know, it's like pretty quick. Uh, I don't know. I just, stuff like that seems, always seemed really accessible. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I, I hope cool. we don't lose those days. I mean, I, I mean, I, I read Jack Kerouac as a kid and I was like, I want to do this shit. I want to hitchhike and it's be... still accessible. Yeah. Yeah, it totally is. I when mean, we are in danger. Sure. But when we were in Costa Rica, the, the community where we were in, it was very, very, very common to see hitchhikers yeah, up and go. down the town we were in. It... The only time I've ever not been picked up by somebody was standing out of the Sacramento airport. And I stood on the side of the road for about three hours in the cold. And then someone threw a full soda can at me and it whizzed over my head. And I was like, okay, fuck this. And I was walking off the overpath, the uh, on-ramp, and a cop picked me up. <laughs> and he was like, get in, you know. And he took me somewhere and I bought a ticket because I just couldn't get a ride. So yeah. cities in the United States, maybe not the best idea. Well, some, uh, yeah, there's probably some that are worse than others and better yeah. than others and all that stuff. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And uh, thanks for bringing Ryan. He's a cool guy. That was a fun yeah. story. Fun What'd stuff. you think? Yeah, it was yeah. good, man. Like I, 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 I mean, like part of me was thinking about my early twenties where I was definitely living that, you know, fun, adventurous, like things were happening. And, and then I got into a really serious relationship with a girl that, that put it into that stuff. And I wish I hadn't allowed it to like, mm. that's definitely a regret mm. I have from college where like there was cool adventures lined up that I put on hold so that I could be with this girl. Yeah. And, and that was a mistake. Mistakes were made. Well said. I mean, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's nothing, I mean, I'm for, you know, it's 20 years ago, so I can't. No, I'm not sensing a lot of regret in you, but yeah. I hear yeah. you though. You'd do it different. Yeah. I would, I would do it different, but man, like when I, you know, the last, uh, I mean, I don't know, man, my, my, my wife and I, we've been married 14 years this summer and we've, we still have amazing adventures together. Yeah. We all kinds of cra crazy fun shit. And we make all kinds of fun things happen. Um, there is like, there is some magic back in the single days, pre-kid days that are like rad when you're just wandering around, you don't know what's going to happen next and you, and you end up in cool places and you can end up doing cool stuff. It just has to be more intentional with well, the family and all those things. I'm glad you mentioned that, Ron, because that's something I really, really respect and admire about your business and what you do is bringing romance and adventure into a, uh, like domestic life you know you have a family and job and i know that you have created and worked very hard to create uh doing your own thing but you still have a lot of responsibilities and <clears throat> you know how to do that within how to have romance how to have adventure within that life is like you said it's it's you you can you just have to be really intentional about it and i think sometimes intentionality can be opposed to that adventurous spontaneous spirit right but it's just a different way to get there and i can see that you and your wife have really created that it's it's really amazing skill appreciate that I, I, one of the reasons we've we have been so adamant about it is because we did have so many fun adventures before we were married and and we thought we we can't let our the family life stop us from doing that I mean, yeah. I'll give credit where credit's due. And her, you know, she got pregnant with a boyfriend before we met and had a baby on her own, which was, I can't imagine that crazy adventure doing that by myself. And she said to me over and over, like the dream that she had was like traveling with her kid when she, when she'd be able to, and we've been able to do that yeah. so many times, so, so many times. And 
on both big scales and small scales. And, you know, you've, you know, where I live in Portland, like we live in what probably a lot of people would consider not a family friendly neighborhood, but uh, we love this neighborhood and it's, and we do it because of how it allows us to live in our, our like with more adventure, more romance. Like it's, it's, it's a lifestyle neighborhood, not like a, this is where you settle and have your white picket fence and, and garage and yeah. all that stuff. No judgment on any of that stuff. It's just not for us. Do you find that with the clients that you both work with, that you are able to succeed in, and they are able to succeed in bringing romance and bringing adventure into their lives again? Yeah, I am. And, and, and I got to say like every, every, what is good for one person, isn't good for another person. Mm-hmm. And what is necessary for one person may not be necessary for another or, and, but it also scales, right? Like romance and adventure scales and, and, and all of it can be done. Like it can be had. It just depends on like what your um, risk levels, <laughs> what you're That's comfortable cool. with and your risk levels. Right. And, and what we see, what I see with my clients is like men who you know, one guy might just be to like, to, to his dream, his like big audacious dream for his family might to spit, might be to spend the summer in Maine, right? If they're from like the Southeast, like yeah. that's as, that's as like big and expansive as he and his family can get. And, and that's, that's totally 100% valid, right? Like that's, oh yeah, there's for nothing. Sure. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't want to ever make anyone feel like that that's not enough for an adventure, but to them, like it's, it's a wild, crazy, amazing adventure that is so bonding for their family. And, and then, you know, we've got friends who are like way more adventurous than us, like families living on sailboats or moving to Eastern Europe or all kinds of other crazy shit. That's like, Whoa, that's like next, next, next level. I mean, we, we actually, I'm going to give a shout out to my friend, Aaron, who has just sent me a text message this morning about how much she likes our podcast. And she's a single mom who was living in Costa Rica. She's from Portland. She was living in Costa Rica. Um, and she, we just happened to be in the same little town at the same time. Like didn't know, we, that was not planned at all. And of all the little surf towns to end up in at the same time, like we were in the same one. And huh. she is down there being a badass mama, taking care of her two daughters and working remotely and being just, just doing rad fun adventures with her girls. And on four wheelers and in the jungle and on the beach and all that stuff. And I was like, that's black belt level stuff. Like it's, it's significantly easier with a co-parent. What she was doing was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to you, Aaron. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> that's a, I'm taking notes from you girl. Well, and that's, that's what I've noticed when, what does adventure and what does romance mean like to yeah. me and, and what, or what, do, what creates that? It's like a state of mind, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, or sometimes it's an experience and then the state of mind that's romantic and adventurous is that you did it, right? That it's over and you actually got through it. Like wasn't very romantic or adventure, yeah. or what, you know, but what I, what I associate most with adventure is, is the unknown is. Yeah, that's right. Diving into something where you don't control everything and you, you really have to trust um, that things are going to be work out. You know, that's what movies are. That's what adventure is to me. That's right. Like we, do, we, we don't get excited about indiana jones running from the from the giant ball because it's safe like (laughs) that's if it was like a safe movie like none of those fun things would be happening it's a hundred percent the 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 truth for me for me at least you know yeah adventure equals my trust in and letting go into the unknown yeah i think that's probably what ryan and you were both talking about and with your experiences like in hawaii is like you guys you went both feet in, you know, you, you both jumped right in and just yeah. took whatever was coming. And, and I think that's a good way. That's the way I would say, that's a good way to see if the universe is talking to you, if God's talking to yeah. you. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. And, and yeah. I know you still are, are li- like living that way in a, in a pretty profound way. Like the way you connect with individuals across, you know, up and down the West coast and in Hawaii and all that stuff and the way you travel you spend big, um, large amounts of time where you go. Like, that's pretty badass, man. That's still incredible. Yeah. It's, it's, it's cool, man. But I think where I really experienced the most adventure is in, um, 
like in our writing group, right? Mm. My my spirit of adventure now, I'm applying it to the way that I'm creative. And like the more adventurous and courageous mm. um, that I can be, when I can be, I'm not always, when I sit down at a computer and let my mind go to places, I'm sure you experience this too, you know, it pays off. And yeah, and it pays off in instead of memories, it pays off in something on the page that's like, really, yeah. I made that? You know, yeah. regardless if it's good, it still feels great to me. Yeah. You know, that, that, um, I've told you about the, the parable of the talents, right? I think so. Wait, we'll go ahead. So the parable of the talents is a story that Jesus tells about like people taking risks. I used to not think oh, it was about yeah. risk, but it's about risk. It's about right. people essentially having the things that they have in their life and risking all of it. That's the one where the dad gets mad at the two who didn't go for it. Yeah, more or less. That's right. So there's three servants. They were all given certain amounts of money. And the one that was, that was punished was the one who didn't risk all of his money to, to essentially like grow it for him. Yeah. And, and I think that's what you're, well, I think that's kind of what we're talking about is like our ability to push through the risk aversion that we all carry around Yeah. and trust that the risk that we're, that we are embarking on is both safe, safe enough, I should say, safe enough and that yeah. no matter what we're going to be okay i mean the hero has gets the adventure they're ready for right and i That's do believe, right I do believe that like you're yeah. ready it might push you but that and readiness might be hey i don't have the tools but i know i'm going to find the tools as yeah. i go and that's one thing you mentioned relationships. I think romance and adventure can definitely be found in the way we relate. And I'm doing that right now with some, with some relationships and it is scary and I don't really know how I'm going to do it, but it, it feels like adventurous and it feels yeah. like there's something to be like experienced and gained and to do that integrated, like you're doing with your family, you're, you're doing, you're having adventures and romance, but you're not doing it at the detriment of risking your family's like, consistency predictability and safety you know like these yeah. really good things um and i think that that's maybe where you just where we arrive to in life sometimes is like now adventure isn't me flying to hawaii spending all my money on the ticket sh walking down to a park spending the day romantically reading a, a book like that's not that sounds awful to me right now like, I <laughs> <laughs> totally i mean like say like in my early 20s i was like hostel backpack that sounds great and now i'm like no i want like <laughs> what i want lifts i want taxis <laughs> i want nice hotels <laughs> and it might not even be just that which i i hear yeah. you i want more comfort too but it might just yeah. be that that doesn't feel adventurous to me i want to create something you know i want to yeah. put something on the line in a different way you know yeah 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 the creation part is a big adventure huge adventure yeah. maybe the biggest one i think so something. i yeah. think so yeah you're probably right about that man oh thanks for asking those questions that's it, it gets my juices flowing or just thinking about it again like am i am i being true enough still to my idea of romance and adventure and and what we mean, you know, I, I, God, I got to hand it all to Morgan. Like that was her phrase. She came up with it. And then she told, she sold me on the idea. And, and what she says is true romance is like something that we do in the name of love and for the sake of love. And so that could be interpersonally with a, with a person who might be our partner, but it could also be the way that we interact with the world at large and with ourself, yeah. Yeah. right? With oh, ourself. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then meaningful adventure is like exactly what we've all been talking about, which is this, this like stepping into the unknown and especially around creation. And I think you, I'm so glad you brought that up because that was in my mind, kind of like the, I didn't realize it was missing, but that's actually the, t I think the pinnacle of it. Look how fulfilling, fulfilled you've been since you've had the courage to join a writing group re relatively recently. And hear feedback and I see you man like I see you putting out work that you're not comfortable with people seeing you did it anyway because we had a deadline and then what happens you know you're scared of the worst thing happening you're scared of it being rejected or not valued and what what if because we have a nice uh, encouraging environment you actually 
realize, oh my God, there's value that I didn't see in this. And I had a hunch, I thought it was, and now you get other people going, yeah, keep going. And that's adventure, man. Yeah, you're you right. Know? Totally right. Well, what we're doing on this podcast has been adventurous. Like it's gonna say the I, same. Yep. I sat down the other day because I wanted to find some people that we could have on here, you know? Yeah. And I was like, this feels uncomfortable. I wanted to have a meeting with you because that was <laughs> safe and I liked us yeah. doing that, but I didn't yeah. have that opportunity and sat down and just started Googling phrases and ended up connecting with someone that we interviewed yesterday that was a really nice talk. And it was like that yeah. came from entering the unknown, you know, yeah. like yeah. that's what that's what lexic or that's what um uh, ryan does he doesn't get hung up on the fear of the unknown he just acts 100 percent. yeah that's pretty evident with him that's amazing that's cool well thanks for putting this together man i appreciate it and um yeah, man. let's do it again i know we've got some more lined up this month i'm looking forward Sounds to the next great. one too, all right man. dude take care dude see you